Good day. Welcome to Endurance Room. I hope everybody's doing well. Today we're taking a look at an old deadfall design from a book by A.R. Harding called Deadfalls and Snares. I came across it a few months ago. I found the PDF. It's freely available online. If you're interested in old school primitive trapping techniques, I highly recommend checking it out. I thought it'd be a cool project if we went through one of them today. You can use this for anything from a raccoon all the way up to a bear, depending on how you scale it. So to set it up, we need two trees that are about 30 inches apart. This could work nicely. These two are about 20 inches apart, and those two are about 30 inches apart. So I like these. I think we can make these work. Location is key always whenever you're setting these up, and you want to preserve it as much as possible by minimizing your time there. So we need some parts to finish up the trap and it's just starting to rain so i'm going to throw up a tarp we'll gather what we need and then we'll go back to our spot and complete the trap Well, it looks like we're training today. <laughs> I've got a couple of the pieces collected to start building our trap. With any deadfall, you need to have an anvil, a piece at the bottom that you can put pressure down into with a longer lever arm. So I've got both of those. And then in the original trap design, they carved a seven notch right into the trees and then put a cross piece in that you could lever up down to the trigger and raise the weight but we're going to use a couple of stakes in the ground to prop up that cross piece so we don't have to cut into the trees i'll show you what i mean it's coming down guys Lovely. So we've got our support beams and our cross piece in. Now we need to lock the lever in with a couple of stakes. So need one more stake here at the end and then we can tie those off and then it'll be on to the trap trigger itself. <laughs> Still raining. We're about halfway there. So I'm starting to work on what's going to be the trigger and to set that up I need to make like an upside down U. So two posts about three feet in length. sharpen on the end and then I cut out a notch for a cross piece that I'm going to lash in. So I've got two of those. I'm going to get them in place and then we'll put the cross piece in.
here's the basic components of the trap. It's just got the framework against the tree out front, kind of an upside down U with the anvil on the bottom and then the lever on top. And then we're gonna have a piece that rests right on top of that first cross piece, holding up our weight. And then our trigger will be back here on top of that second U. All right, guys, we're almost there. So this piece right here is going to be our lever. This is what's going to sit on our first cross piece and hold up our weight out here. But then this end is going to slide into the trigger, which is right here. And it's gonna come back over top of that second U-shaped piece and then fit into our trigger like so. I can take a bit more material out of this seven notch. I moved this bracket in a little bit. Now we've got our lever, which is going to sit across just like so, holding up our weight. And then our trigger, which I've carved a second seven notch in. So our first seven notch, and then our second seven notch. Like so. And then the weight is gonna be holding this in place. You want to be careful when that goes, this piece is going to go flying. But the idea is to have the bait down here, the animal come through, dislodge the bait. Uh huh. So, Jess, that log's not so heavy. Check this out. Seven notch. Seven notch. And there's our, our bait stick. This is just for an example, but you want to be very careful when you're practicing these and setting these up. All right, so we've got a weight up on the top end of our lever with that heavy log. And then we've got another log down here at the bottom to keep it from bouncing out and to add additional weight. When I was putting this in place, it was twisting my trigger a bit. So I had to be really careful as I was laying it in. It wants to push this top piece closer towards me and slide. So to keep that from happening, you could carve in a little notch that give it a groove and keep it from moving to the left or the right. The intention of our design is to lure our target down along this trail with our bait, which is attached to our bait stick here, our trigger stick. We would set up a corral around our trigger system to limit his point of access to just between our trees here. Not too bad. I would not want to be caught under there in any form or shape. There's a lot of weight coming down on that top, that top log. That piece right there is probably 100 pounds. This one's probably 150. So to finish this up, we would just drive in some stakes around 
our trigger system. So from this sapling, we drive it around, forming a U over to the other sapling, about that height, and then cover it over with brush to limit our target's point of entry to just in between those two trees. Now that we're almost wrapped up, the rain has finally decided to stop. That's okay, this was a good day to do this. I learned something, I hope you guys did too. I hope you enjoyed. You know, you could scale this trap up or down depending on your target. Ideally, you want about six times the weight coming down as the weight of your target. So if you were targeting, say, a 40 pound coyote, you'd want about 200 pounds coming down on it. Pretty cool. That took about two hours to set up with filming and in the rain. And like I said, this is my first time setting up this trap. I've set up similar ones, but there's a lot of carryover between the different designs. They utilize a lot of the same principles, the same notches, the same carving. So once you've understood a couple of them, you can kind of make your way with a bunch of different designs and even make your own. But this is really interesting. This is how they used to do it back in the day before steel traps, before modern snares. And this is how you can put food on the table. So hopefully you never need anything like this, but it's better to know it and not need it than the other way around. So I hope you guys are good. I hope you enjoyed. If you got any questions, just let me know down below and I'll try and help you out. All right, everybody. We'll catch you soon. Cheers.